George Crumb here with another episode of the Fish Alaska blog series. And today I'm going to talk about twitching jigs, specifically how to make your own. Twitching jigs are available from a variety of different manufacturers like Hawk and Tackle, BNR Tackle, and they're all great. The key with a twitching jig is it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be made out of rabbit. It doesn't have to have rubber legs in it. Uh, the main critical thing about twitching jigs is it's tied on a lead head that's heavy enough to make it do this when you're twitching it. That is the action that drives a fish crazy and what's attached to this doesn't really matter much beyond that. I'm going to explain to you how I like to tie really simple twitching jigs that work quite well. Some of the materials that you can put on twitching jigs for body material, I like to use cactus chenille sometimes, especially for my simple twitching jigs. I will put flash, or at least a few strands into my twitching jigs. And here are several different kinds of uh, flash, crinkle mirror flash, one of my favorite. Regular flashaboo or holographic flashaboo is also great. Sometimes I'll put schloppen hackles on my twitching jigs. Schloppen is just a, a big soft feather like these here, and it's available in all kinds of different colors. Sometimes I use rabbit in my twitching jigs, but I'm starting to lean towards marabou uh, for the tail portion of the twitching jig because it simply doesn't foul as much. And marabou, like schloppen, is available in a whole bunch of different colors. I do still use rabbit, also available in lots of different colors. And for twitching jigs, um, you'll want both straight cut rabbit and cross cut rabbit. The pink here is a cross cut rabbit. It's cut differently. It's cut perpendicular to the grain of the hair on the hide. Straight cut is cut in line with the direction the hair is on the hide. Um, we use a straight cut for the tail section. We use the cross cut portion for the body section if you're gonna use rabbit. A lot of times I'll incorporate some rubber, rubber legs into my twitching jigs as well. They provide a little bit more movement. They can provide a little bit of color contrast and also rubber tends to vibrate in the water. We can't hear it, but I'm pretty sure that the fish can. So with that said, I'm going to show you how to tie a very simple yet very effective twitching jig. And for this jig, I'm going to use large purple cactus chenille for the body. I'm going to incorporate some rubber legs that happen to be purple and black, just a few. Some holographic purple flashaboo. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. I'm going to use a chartreuse jig head and this jig head, I actually powder coated it myself, but I bought the plain jig head from Dinger Tackle. Uh, they make a, a nice jig head with a fairly stout hook that happens to be 4 aught, so it'll work well for both Chinook and Silvers. I've already uh, put a thread base down on this and since this is a fairly long shanked hook, I'm going to use, I'm guessing it's going to take at least 6 inches of material to, to cover that hook shank. So with cactus chenille, typically I'll, I'll strip a few fibers off of the core so that I have a place to tie in. And before I do that, I'm going to put my marabou in. We're going to use a purple body, but we're going to use black marabou for the tail. This is overall a dark colored jig, but it has a bright chartreuse head, so it does provide a fair amount of cont contrast without being overpowering. Now what makes a good marabou feather varies. I don't really like any of these all that much. I might actually have to use two of them. That one looks pretty good, but it's not quite enough body for what I really want to accomplish. So I'm going to find another one that looks good. Now this package of marabou would be great for uh, tying woolly boogers, but not so great for twitching jigs. The, the feathers just aren't big enough or full enough. But if we use two, we should be able to get the effect that we want. And what effect is that? Well, I want my tail for this particular um, jig hook, I want my tail to be slightly longer than the hook shank is. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to line up my feathers so they're both about the same length. All right, that should work. Big plume, big fluffy thing. Do you need to pick out the center stem? No. I wouldn't worry about it for a twi twitching jig. The fish aren't getting to look at it that closely because a twitching jig is always moving. What's important is that it goes up, down, up, down, up, down. That's, that's the action that drives a fish crazy. And the soft material in the tail, even if it doesn't look perfect to you, 
will do the trick. Now we're tying on two marabou stems here. It's a kind of a lot of material. So I'm using very heavy thread. This, this thread that I'm using today is 210 denier uh, flat wax nylon by Danville. It's a, it's a thread that I use a lot for steelhead flies, salmon flies, twitching jigs. It's a heavy, strong thread. And that's all I'm really after here. Now I'm gonna wrap this up most of the way. I'm gonna cut the thick portion of the stem off, get it out of the way. And you might be thinking, well, gee, George, that's gonna leave kind of a ugly bump in the middle of the body. Trust me, the salmon don't care. I am gonna lash it down very tight though because I don't want this spinning on the hook shank later. All right, so there's our tail, it's tied in. I'm gonna tie in some flash boo now and what I have here is probably be about six strands or so. I wet them so that they'll stick together a little bit for me, makes them easier to work with. I wrap all those strands around my tying thread and even up the ends a little bit. I'm gonna tie these in so that they're basically straight over the top of the hook shank, which when you're fishing it will be straight under the hook shank because uh, the jig will be turned 180 degrees. Do you have to put them on each side? No, I don't think so, at least not with the flash. As long as it's there, it's gonna dance and do its job. Notice that this flash is slightly longer than the marabou. That's okay with me. You could trim it if you want. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to do so though. All right, back to our crystal flash. Or cactus chenille, I mean. I'm gonna tie that in. Probably time to put these on for a minute. I'm tying in that core from which I had stripped fibers off of earlier. And again, I'm tying it in fairly tight because I, I just want to make sure it doesn't pull out. One of the benefits of using a simple twitching jig like this instead of one with, say, a cross-cut rabbit around the body is uh, that cross-cut rabbit frequently stretches and gets kind of torn up for, by the fish's teeth and, and really it just sort of comes apart after a while. This jig, it rarely comes apart. It, it holds together for a long time and a lot of fish. As I wrap this cactus chenille, as if I were wrapping a hackle, I kind of sweep the fibers back in between each turn. And I guessed on how much material I'm going to need. If you don't sweep the fibers back like this, you end up with kind of a goofy looking body. The fish won't care, they really won't. But I like to put very close turns of this on because it gives a fuller looking body, which makes me feel better, but more importantly, it actually slows the fall of the jig if you get this stuff packed on kind of tight. And these jigs fall fast enough already, so I am good with that. Notice these are, I mean this thing's huge compared to tying a size 12 or 14 nymph. I don't use hackle pliers or anything like that, it's faster to do it without it. I actually tie these on my Norvice a fair amount at home, but um, I'm traveling today so it's easier to just wrap by hand with the, with the old regal vise. Okay, we're approaching the end of the deal and it looks like I guessed pretty good on the uh, amount of material to use. I'm gonna be a little bit short, but that's okay. We'll make up for it. Tying off the excess. Trim off that little piece. If you bind down a few fibers here, it's no big deal. Okay, we've got a little bit of space with uh, nothing to do. What I'm going to do first is put rubber legs on, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a, a hackle, a contrasting hackle of some sort, probably black, because overall I want this jig dark. These rubber legs I'm using are uh, black in the middle and purple on the ends. Does it matter that much? No, it really doesn't. Mostly I just want the additional movement they provide and the vibration. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm gonna tie them on basically in the middle of that black section. I'm tying them right over the top of the hook shank like so. And all I'm gonna do is fold them back. Do they have to be perfectly centered or anything like that? No. Can you pull them out to the sides if you want? Yes. Nothing wrong with that, so I'll, I'll do that just for grins. Now I've got, basically got rubber legs hanging off both sides of the jig. 
I'm not too concerned if they're perfectly the same length. Again, if the jig's doing this, it's fishing. All right, now last but not least, a schlop and hackle. And why am I tying the schlop, schlop and hackle? Uh, just to fill up that space. I could also cut another section of cactus chenille and fill it up. And in fact, that's what I'm gonna do. So it won't take much, three or four turns is all I need there. Cut that off. Grab the end and strip the fibers off the cord just like that. Pull that back, tie it in. I'm just gonna hide those underneath everything. All right. I probably would have been smart to bring hackle pliers for this, but I'll make it work. Pull back. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so we're tied up against the jig head now. I'll go ahead and tie this off. Now again, I use heavy thread for this because I want this tied off tight. I don't want, I'm not a fan of my flies or jigs coming apart. So I tie, I try to tie them really strong and right so that I don't have to deal, deal with that. So there you have it. We're basically at the end of the line here. All I really need to do after this is whip finish and this twitching jig will be done. So what I'm gonna do before I whip finish, I'm gonna take some brushable super glue. This ain't, I can't take credit for this. A lot of people do this, but this is an easy way to whip finish. I'll pull my thread up where I can see it and I'll brush some of this brushable super glue on it. Make about three turns whip finish. And you don't need much of a whip finish, that's three. If you put super glue in it like that, and you whip finish, that super glue is gonna soak all through that thread and it ain't coming undone. All right. Now, if I had a guess right on the amount of uh, cactus chenille I actually needed to cover that entire hook shank, this process would have went a couple minutes faster. But if you develop a system and you want to tie a dozen of these, you can, you can probably tie a dozen of these in an hour pretty easily. Now that I'm looking at this in profile, I do like the looks of it. It's going to work, I guarantee you. I will go ahead and cut some of these flashaboos a little bit shorter. I don't need to be quite that long. Uh, this jig, as simple as it is, works as well as the most expensive one you can buy on the market. Um, the more I use jigs tied like this, the more fond I become of them. One of the key aspects is the mobile tail. <sighs> that marabou and flashaboo move really easily. And what I found is, if tied properly, marabou tails don't foul around the bend of the hook nearly as often as twitching jigs tied with rabbit. So I like that. There's a front end look at the twitching jig, and of course those rubber legs are gonna be flying all over the place as you're twitching it. Profile view, this happens to be a, a half ounce jig with a four hot hook. This color combination will work well for both silvers and kings in most waters that you can fish a twitching jig in. You may want to vary the size of the twitching jig for smaller streams. Let's say I'm going to, oh, I don't know, I'm gonna fish silvers in Montana Creek, by the railroad trestle bri bridge, that's a deep hole. Uh, I might need a half ounce jig like this to fish that hole effectively. Um, in a shallower hole in Montana Creek, I'd probably get by with a quarter ounce jig. So you need to take those things into consideration. If I'm gonna twitch the Nushigak at the mouth of a slough someplace, probably a half ounce jig, possibly even a three quarter ounce jig. So think about that when you're tying your twitching jigs. If I was going to Bird Creek and I wanted to twitch jigs, as we approach high tide, I'd probably be using a half ounce jig, but I'd want to have some quarter ounces there too, because the funny thing about Bird Creek is, even though the water might be 18 feet deep, uh, close to high tide, um, the silvers are typically only down three or four feet. So anyway, very simple twitching jig, easy to tie, very, very productive, just as, a, just as productive as any twitching jig you can buy out there.